All right, everybody, what is going on? Welcome, welcome, welcome. You got quite the crew tonight. I'm gonna get stuff, there we go. I see the live video over here. Nice. So we've got a couple things going on right now. Got laptops all over the kitchen. This is like tech center over here. Okay. We're making it work because we're excited to hang out with everyone tonight. And it's going to be a fun evening because it is going to involve, well, I can guarantee it will involve wine because it already does. Uh, it also might involve, here we go, toddler currently sleeping. Hopefully we'll still be sleeping as the rest of the evening goes on here, but there is no telling. So we might have uh, to debate live uh, in front of you guys on who has to go take care of him and who gets to keep hanging out with you all tonight. But I think what will be a lot of fun is if we hear from you, we hear from who's trying to, so I'm gonna keep Facebook going over here. I see Rachel, you're on there, wave to us, say hi. Um, as people are tuning in, let us know. Let us know you're hanging out and we want to uh, chat it up here. As we're getting going, I wanna hear from anyone already with us or joining on here. See a couple more jumping on. So if you are a uh, mom that's listening in with us, wanna hear how many kids you have and what, um, like what's, what's your idea of mom self-care right now? If that is even a thing, if that exists, it's fine. This is actually, this is Laura's favorite wine. Would you still say it's your favorite wine? I don't know. I feel like I've matured a little bit. She's matured. So this is new age. Those of you um, who don't know all that much about us, see Argentina, that first word on the back. New age is a mix. I see you jumping on too, Nicole. Hello, hello. Let's see, can we see who all is watching live? I see, we think we can see most people, but not everyone there. Hey, Nicole. All right, so. You're talking about our wine. We're talking about wine, yes, Argentina. We both had an opportunity to study abroad in Argentina, which was a lot of fun. And it was while you were there you tried it first or when you came back? You're not allowed to try it there. Oh, that is true. We were, it was part of the cultural experience. <laughs> we made culture, we had cultural experiences that required trying wine. <laughs> <laughs> is what we were meant to say. Uh, but anyways, she tried it down there and we found it in a few grocery stores here. It's a it's a white wine, but so it's one of those a little bit sweeter, 90% Torrantones and 10% Sauvignon Blanc. It's pretty good. That's how I mom self-care. We can end the webinar now. Yes, the wine may or may not be a part of your self-care, but um, hopefully there's a little bit more to it. And, but really, guys, we are excited that you're joining in. Um, we're excited to be doing a webinar for moms because really, you guys are what make the world go around some of the most important people on the planet. You're selfless, you're sacrificial, passionate about your family, right? I'm sure you've heard the phrase mama bear before. We've had people in the office talking about how, you know, so-and-so would happen to, something would happen to their kids, they'd go mama bear um, all up on that situation. So we know that you do anything for your kids. And you want them the best. You want to give them the best. This is why you always put yourself last and give everyone else um, all of your energy, all of your time, and everything like that. So you're the last one to sit at the table after serving everyone else dinner. You're the last one to go to bed because you got to make sure lunches are packed and laundry is all folded, dishes are done. Basically, you're the last one to get the care, get the rest, and get the love that you need. Um, and that's why we want to share tonight because we feel like it should be differently. I uh, hopefully we don't hear too much of our personal life here and how we are maybe should be doing it betterly and differently ourselves. I think we might, I might get end up ending up getting put on the spot here by uh, maybe our lack of mom self care that takes place in our household. I'm going to be able to weasel some stuff out of him. Yeah, we'll see. This. See you joining too, Kaylin. Thanks for hanging out. Give us a wave. Let us know what uh, your idea of self-care is so far. Um, but anyway, so we want to basically feel like and it, you can do more for the family if you do it just a little bit for yourself, basically. Um, and that's really why we want to share tonight. We want to share some tips, some ideas um, to basically help you achieve what might seem like is impossible 
which is letting mom have some R and R herself too. So as you've obviously obviously already gathered here, we want to make this fun and interactive and make sure we can hear from you. So jump in, chat, see some comments here. I'll keep them going. I see Stephanie, Emily, hello, hello, hi Kaylin. Yes, you're not going to be disappointed for uh, hanging out with us for a little bit this evening. R and R mean? R and R. Can someone please comment and prove that R and R is not a weird term that Andrew is just making up, but is like a normal phrase? Rest. Yes. And recover. That would work. I think it's like rest and relaxation, right? See anyone it's chiming the same in? Thing. No, it's kind of different. Rest and relax. Rest and relaxation. Thank you, Nicole. This is the same thing. Can. Anyways, thank you, Stephanie. I'm not crazy. All right. Um, so, anyways, that's what we feel like is needed for moms, and that's why we want to take a minute to hang out. Um, so, what are you taking there? Um. Hello. So you might think that it seems selfish to focus on yourself a little bit as a mom, just because so much of your day, as in all of your day, is focused on everybody else, serving everybody else. Um, but I believe that it's not selfish. It's actually um, more servant-like because um, have you ever heard the phrase, you can't pour from an empty cup? That is. Isn't much, that just referring to wine? Yeah, well, that's why we always keep it full. That is very applicable here because moms pour out of themselves all day long. Um, they're just giving their time, their energy. They don't sleep because they have to finish the laundry or pack the lunches or organize homework or whatever it is that you're doing in whatever stage of motherhood that you're you're in, I know that my mom is still up all night just because she's a mom and she's worried about us. So I don't think it ever ends when you become a mom. So um, you pour and pour all day long and you're left empty. You're exhausted. I know I crash at the end of the day. I just want to mindlessly scroll or read a book that doesn't require much brain power on my part because I don't have much which I wanted to warn you I lose a lot of my brain power when my kid goes to sleep so I don't know what's gonna happen here you and see, we're, we're pushing Laura's bedtime yes. right now what time is it 8 38 yes yeah 9 15 is kind of my if, limit. <laughs> she has a blanket on from here down so I mean she's ready for bed I got my contacts out and everything so anyway um is that selfish what we're trying to accomplish here? Because if you fill yourself back up after pouring out, um, you will be able to give more to your family and to whoever else you're serving. So I've noticed that whenever I can fill myself back up in different ways that we'll talk about, um, I'm more patient with my little and probably with my husband. Um, I don't get frustrated as easily. I don't feel like crying as easily. I just am overall calmer because I feel like I can take more. And um, I also feel that I don't struggle with the bitterness or the jealousy that I tend to have towards this guy because he gets to Com leave. Completely undeserved. Yeah, he gets to leave every day, right? We all hear moms kind of bashing their husbands because they just don't get it. They get to leave or they don't have to worry about it. And um, I find that whenever I'm so tired and not filling myself back up with things that I enjoy, I start taking it out on him and others that are around me that might not necessarily understand what I'm going through or why I'm so tired or um, whatever it is. I just start to get jealous that I don't have their life and then I don't get to leave to go to the office or I don't, when I come home from work, I can't just not do anything. I still have to cook dinner and put the kids to bed and prepare for the next day of work and <clears throat> school, kids' school and whatever, however it fits into your life. Mom's jobs are never done. So if you're constantly pouring out and never being filled back up, you're going to have a lot of struggles with your attitude, your patience, whatever it is. Moms um, are, we joked before how moms are, moms are the default parents. So no matter what, like 
you know, for our situation, I'm the one that's getting out, that's going to the uh, office, getting out of the house, getting some free time away from Zeke every day, and she usually is not. Um, but it doesn't matter if you, both parents are working, if whatever situation is, it seems like moms are always the default parent, right? Like if there's nothing, if there's kind of a, well, how, how have you described that before? Like, cause you're joking around with other, other moms, how you guys end up being the default. I mean, just take a look at anybody who goes to a restaurant with their kid and you'll often see that dad is continuing to eat while mom is trying to keep her child in the high chair or distracted from throwing forks or knives or just giving him whatever he needs to just calm down. Mom's just always on where uh, I think dads can kind of check out a little bit more naturally. Not that we should, but it's true. Moms are more the default. See, Julie is showing you some love here, saying you're one of her favorite boy moms. So, holla, there you go. Um, bro, you get it. So yeah, that is that's really what we want to uh, get at and explain that. Please do not think that um, taking some time to give back to yourself to take care of yourself is a selfish thing. It is ultimately the opposite. It is going to let you be a better wife, be a better uh, mom, be a better sister, be a better employee, whatever it might be. Um, and that doesn't have to be a, um, uh, like mom gets a luxury cruise away. That might just mean mom gets like two hours. Take one of those, so. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, so it doesn't have to be something extravagant, but it needs to be something that is letting you rejuvenate. And apparently Nicole agrees with you on being a default parent. She, she gets what you're saying. And, uh, Julia too here. What's up Kelly? How you doing? I'm waving over here. You're over here. Um, so anyways, that's what, that's really what we want to make sure that we, we really get at initially here is that it's not, this isn't something that you need to feel like, listen, you already feel guilty for everything, right? Like, um, you're the default responsibility person. So if anything goes wrong or if there's a problem with kids, you take it on yourself. So this isn't another thing to make you feel guilty about like, oh, I took a afternoon or a Saturday morning to just be away. And now I'm guilty because my husband had to actually do something. Um, don't, don't feel like that at all. So I feel like what would be helpful is to share some examples, some ideas, cause really there's no like secret sauce to self-care. Um, if there was, I would prefer you send it my way, please. Okay. This is not, this is different. Hey Sven. Hey Jen. How are you doing? Good to see you guys. Um, so there's no like secret, but what we want to do maybe is share some ideas because that might be something that sparks for you. Because I know some things that you really enjoy and kind of recharge your batteries probably don't really matter to others. And other people really might love like getting out and um, something you wouldn't like. I don't know. Just keep thinking of all this stuff. Chocolate. chocolate. Yeah, she is one of the only females that doesn't like chocolate at all. Uh, mix it with peanut butter. That's a different story. Reese's or anything like that. But anyways the point is not to say this is what to do they just say here's some ideas and you need to do something whatever it is that you enjoy think back to you know yesteryear and when you uh pre-kids and when you got to do stuff on your own whatever that was um whether that's painting <laughs> or blogging or journaling or you're giving me ideas or... stop talking. all right so let's hear some ideas okay so when i became a mom i hey sam was, so you in, in, too. was in chicago we lived in Chicago for the first four months of our little guy's little life and kind of hibernated, didn't really do much um, other than hang out with him all day. And then when we moved here and settled our lives, I realized I don't really know what to do for me. So I started thinking back at who I was before mom and who I have become, what I used to enjoy and what I am kind of morphing into enjoying. And started making that a regular routine once we moved here. Um, so I, I, the first thing I said was do what you love and then remember old hobbies and create new ones. And then I said, do you like painting? Because I couldn't think of any other hobbies that people might enjoy because I don't really have a specific hobby like that. So I couldn't think of anything, but I mean, people like to draw or sketch. I think those are the same thing. Well, some of the stuff that you'll talk about later, you can their hobby like I guess CrossFit like that it's a hobby even though it's working out it's taking care of yourself that's really self-care in multiple ways it's 
physically again you. you're giving away my things that's what you're talking about so you could i separated it you could do your hobbies so painting or i just you can start painting. <laughs> okay so the pre, next one <laughs> pre-baby laura really like the paint uh, I know that, like. I don't know. The next one is to get out of the house without your kids. And I prefer to get out of the house by myself. I don't, I mean, date nights are really, <laughs> date nights are really great, but it's also really important to have some alone time where somebody's not touching you, grabbing you, constantly saying ma, 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 all day long. Um, so what I really enjoy and what I've always enjoyed and then have brought that into motherhood I just love going to a coffee shop and journaling and now blogging. That is something new after motherhood because I'm with a small kid that doesn't talk all day. So I'm going to talk to the world, put it out there on the internet. Um, Someone's listening, right? Yeah. By the way, hi to Heather. I see you, Jen Ken and Meg joining on. Thanks for hanging out. Especially Meg. Miss you guys. Hope everything's well. And you and your cute little boy and handsome man are doing great. Um, so yeah get out without your kid have some you time i also like to really get um get out with my mom we have some uninterrupted girl time getting our nails done because we realized that we were hanging out with zeke all the time and we weren't really just having girl time so um we've all just kind of created these habits that help me a lot i know um so those are the things that i like to do without my kid some people like to go shopping I would probably like that too if you know remember I said earlier it doesn't have to involve like spending money and stuff though mm -hmm. right so the next thing I said was What's going on Caleb don't let Mandy join in she's going to give you a bunch of ideas on the ways you have to show her love and everything I'm digging myself a hole so the next thing that I said was taking care of yourself so this is where um, CrossFit came in you could consider it a hobby but this is how I um like physically take care of myself it's also good alone time because I go usually without my kids so I get, get human interaction adult interaction and I get to push myself in ways that I wouldn't otherwise be doing um, but do what you love go for a run take a long walk um, even if it's over nap time in the stroller just get out get moving I always feel better when I move um, do yoga take deep breaths. I don't really care. Just physically take care of yourself because when you're physically taking care of yourself, mentally it will follow. There's a lot of science behind that feeling better when you get moved and you want me to talk about it. No, thank you. I don't like science. Are you sure? Yes. Yeah. Um, can, can I have some hand raises for anyone that wants to hear science, please? No. I'll, I'll pay attention here. I'm sure we'll get lost. You can just send wine glasses. Um, the other thing that's super helpful is finding your tribe. So go on mom dates without your kids. Uh, find the people that get it, that totally understand why you're frustrated or encourage you when you are frustrated. Um, we were talking about this a little bit of how important it is to surround yourself with people that aren't just going to spend time with you and complain the whole time. Because um, we heard once that what, the average, you're the average of the five people you're around. Yeah. So we want to be better for our kids. We want to be better for our husband, for our families. And it's not going to help anybody if what we do when we get out alone with our friends or whatever is complain about them. It's not going to help my marriage with Andrew if I go and just complain about how awful he is and he smells bad or something all the time. I mean, sometimes it's fine, but all the time it's, it's not going to help. So surround yourself with people that are on the same mission, that they get it. They will listen to you when you are down, but at the end of that, they will pick you up and say, tomorrow's a new day. You got it. Yeah. I think that's important. That's, I, I feel like I probably sometimes go too far in that, um, the positivity or the optimism side, like, cause it is probably important to have probably it's, it is important to have the ability and the space to like vent, to complain, to not hide emotions. Um, whereas I want to jump straight to the silver lining or the positivity or the optimism and she just gets sick of it. So thank you to all of her mom friends that give her the opportunity to vent, whether it's about me or not. Uh, cause I know that's definitely not my strong suit. 
can say hey to Sarah too. Thanks for giving us a wave here. Um, so no, that's that's really important one is yes, don't surround yourself with loser mom friends that just complain and whine and bring everyone else down, but have a have a tribe. Let's talk about mom dates. Oh, yes. that next? Yes, yes. <laughs> I thought this was so... bizarre, but maybe you guys will relate. Let me, uh, hey Emily, see you joining on there too. Um, I want to know if this is actually a thing or a like experience that moms go through. Mm. So as she's explaining, give me some feedback here on the side and let me know if this is actually real or weird stuff because I'm not convinced. Mom dates. So finding mom friends is super awkward, right? You're in college, you're forced to hang out with the same group of people in the same life stage as you. High school, same thing. You're in the same group. Um, and then you become a mom and not only are you like worried about your own personality, but you like need to figure out if your kids will mesh or if your parenting life, your parenting beliefs will mesh a little bit. Um, and so it can be super weird. And I think mom interaction, social interactions get really awkward whenever you kind of are out of touch with adult people. So you just kind of forget how to talk. Um, so I just think of it as you're like the first base, second base, third base. It's pretty much how it is with dating moms. So you're on first base where you're, you're with um, your little one in music class or gymnastics or whatever little event that you have signed your kiddo up for. And you're just side by side with this mom that you're like, you're kind of cool. I kind of think you're fun and silly. I don't really know how to talk to you. So I'm going to talk to you about your kid. How old's your kid? How many months? What's he doing? Oh, mine too. Look, they like each other. And you just start talking each class. And, um, and then one day you get the courage and ask for each other's numbers. That happened to me on the last class. <laughs> That's a buzzer beater. <laughs> what if one of you guys didn't show up for uh, last class? It's, it's nerve wracking. <laughs> who was, who are you talking about someone specifically or just multiple times? A couple times, but my friend, Sarah, she, we, we, uh, we got the buzzer beater. We just Sarah went Thomas. for it. Yeah. At the end. I think she's watching. Um, and then second base is whenever you meet in neutral ground. So you say, let's meet at the playground for a play date. Let's go for coffee with the kiddos. Um, just to hang out. It'll be really fun. So you just meet neutral ground. Third base is when you invite each other over to your houses. The first time you probably clean and like put out a whole spread of food and whatever. And then as the relationship goes on, you just don't do that anymore. Did you ever do that for anyone coming over? No, but I've gone to so many moms that do that. And I say, I can never host because I'm <laughs> the worst hostess ever. Um, and then a home run guys home run is when you know you've made it and you're in a committed relationship and that's when you go out without the kids because you don't need them anymore just a buffer and you're real friends so I know it's really awkward but these are the stages of mom dating push through get to get to home base home. how do you so how do you like you just gotta Go stick it, it out. Yeah. Someone's gotta. I mean, sometimes you might get to second base, and you're like, "This isn't gonna go anywhere. We're not. We're not compatible." Yeah, you're kids like, kind of don't. You're like good each for other. first base level. Maybe the kids kind of get along, but they're just you're not gonna actually hang out. Yeah, you're not gonna go further that, and that's okay because they're not they're not gonna be your people. You need to find your people. It is what it is. Cool. Um, so, what other? I think one thing that'd be helpful because, like we were saying, like. There's no secret message other than the wine. There's no secret sauce to like taking care of yourself and, and keeping that balance. Um, but what we want to do is share some ideas. So anyone that's listening, joining on, I see there's a handful of people around still. So share whether you're really good at doing it a lot or not. Share what some of your favorite things to do are um, just personally. And maybe that will be an idea for someone else joining in and listening. Also, maybe we can like, you know, sneak some of these comments, like send them to your husband or family members or grandmas or something that can help make it actually happen. So um, if you don't, if you didn't have to run off and put the kids to bed or something, comment and let us know what, um, basically what, um, 
what you found to be best for you to help uh, keep yourself charged and not getting into what we were talking about in the beginning with that bitterness and uh, frustration and feeling like you're just drained and empty and running on E all the time. I'd be curious to, to see if there's any ideas. Maybe we can get a good idea for you. Um, all right, so you want to keep, you have any other thoughts with that? You want to keep rolling here? We'll keep rolling. Um, those are just some ideas. Obviously, everyone has their own preferences and whatever. And when you do these regularly, semi-regularly, whatever, um, you'll you'll come back feeling refreshed because it's something that fed you, fed your soul, and um, helped you relax a little bit. Yeah, there's some ideas. Coffee, reading a book, and Netflix binge watching are are what's Nicole's suggestions. Yes. Spa stuff too. Mm -hmm. I'll take some of that. No, that sounds awesome. No, no, no. Um, I feel like I feel like just the coffee book journaling slash blogging is a big one for you yeah just getting off to that starbucks and yeah hanging out for a bit definitely helps yeah um but it, it does all sleep. help i come back kaylin's all caps got sleep <laughs> working out taking long baths see that's an example of one that you've like never really cared for i don't ever know what to do in a bath you know your book it gets a wet don't put it in the water <laughs> kaylin have you ever read a book and not caught it all wet Please confirm. <laughs> Running, uh, Heather there, just a couple weeks post new baby. So yes, I agree. Speaking Wanted, of Heather, don't recommend. She but. had the best idea. Every the the fad is a baby moon, and she she told her husband she wants a mommy moon where she goes away for the weekend by herself without the kids and without the husband. And I after think, having the baby, no, know? before having the baby, before someone pregnant. Yes, and I think it's the best idea ever to have a mommy moon before you have a new baby where he or she's going to keep you up all night you get away for an entire weekend to sleep in a bed that you didn't have to make and clean sheets and it's, it just sounds awesome yeah um kaylin said you just sleep in the bath <laughs> you don't even need a book okay just take a nap you do love naps i do um emily said too um in between two jobs busy life Going to the gym, so relaxing and recharges. No, that's an awesome one. And honestly, guys, if you don't know where to start, I would try to do that. Like maybe you're new to exercise, just be active, go on a walk, get moving. Cause that's not only gonna give you some clarity, some, especially now that it's nice out, some fresh air, some sunshine, you're gonna have the benefits of physical exercise too. Like you're gonna feel energized, you're gonna feel more active and all those great science things that nobody raised their hand to hear, unfortunately. <laughs> um, and uh, Heather's saying that she just uh, drinks wine instead of being able to run now, too. Hey, Delta. Nice see you jumping on there, too. Um, so, yeah, what were we talking about? I was saying that these things make us feel really relaxed for a couple hours, a couple days, maybe even a week if it was a really good time. Um, but inevitably, life kicks in and we feel exhausted at the end of the day again. And our patience is thin. We're empty. We are tired. Um, we need another, another kick, another something. Um, and I've realized it's because that's all external things coming into me, um, where it's yes, filling me up again, but it's not keeping me energized. Um, what I have found really beneficial is making sure my, um, my body is prepped for the stresses of motherhood. It's um, as best as you can be prepped for motherhood. Um, it's, I need my internal to be ready to go outwards and then rather than depending on the outwards coming in. So that's when I am going to let him start talking for probably like a minute before I cut in again. <laughs> yeah, because that's honestly, that's like, it's kind of like combo, like you're hearing from Andrew and Laura, but at the same time, hey, Krista, see you join on again. You're just hanging out with us on like videos all day. Love it. Uh, you missed, you, Krista, make sure you jump back here because we talked a lot, lot about wine and self-care and great things. So you have to circle back after we wrap the webinar up. But like we're saying, we, um, this is both us personally, but also like Thrive, right? This is what we're all about. We're a pediatric, prenatal, family-focused office. So what we basically do is hang out with moms all day, right? Because you either are a mom yourself, expecting um, your little one, you are the mom bringing your kids in, or you're the mom getting care of yourself. Um, it's all about mom life. So we want to 
basically we, we know and we've seen time and time again that the family is at their best if mom's at their best, right? That's the whole message of what we're talking about tonight. And we know that, you know, when we're helping someone's kids, whether it's a specific challenge they're dealing with, like colic or nursing challenges or ear infections or sensory or ADHD, or whatever the kid's issue is, um, they could, we can help the whole family a lot better if it's not just the kid that's getting that care, but it's the mom as well. And really the, um, the way we are able to, to do that and make a difference is this thing we talk about with, you know, gas versus brake. We talk about the stress in your nervous system. Some of you like um, Heather and, and Nicole and Kaylin and they're joining, you've, you've heard this conversation, right? Because this is our, this is the drum we beat every time because this is what keeps people healthy, keeps people well, that your body has this fight or flight gas pedal stressed out mode and it has this calm, relaxing, new age wine <laughs> mode, right? Our growth and our development and our sleep is where it should be and we're digesting what we should be with food and our immune system balance. And we wanna be spending all our time in that calm, relaxing state. Regardless of all these other things, um, we could still inside be in that stress mode, be in that anxiety mode. Even if your personality is like the most happy-go-lucky, easy, chill, relaxed person, your body could still be living in that fight or flight stress, gas pedal mode. And the cool thing is we don't have to guess at whether or not it is, if we can help or not, but we've got these scans, this technology that really lets us measure and track and see, are you doing well? Are you balanced? Are you healthy? Or is your body living in this stress, fight or flight, gas pedal mode? No matter what we're doing outside of here, all these other things, CrossFit and running and wine and baths and um, all the above, no matter what you're doing with that, if you don't take care of that internal stress, you're never going to be able to take care of the family as much as you want to, right? You're never going to be able to have the energy to give back and to care endlessly like you are trying to do so well. So that's why we love what we get to do so much is because we can kind of give moms that secret power, that secret boost, that hidden weapon of um, calming that underlying nervous system stress. So one, they've just got a bigger tank to begin with. So when they're at the end of the day feeling drained, they had a bigger tank to pull from. So life's doing a lot better. Um, so that's why we're so passionate about helping moms because we know that moms are the ones that make the world go round. So if we can help them be at their best, it's really helping the whole family. Um, a couple other things I want to touch base on with that, because it's really relevant to some stuff we have coming up for a lot of families, a lot of moms, um, their kiddos, are like the biggest stress point, right? It's a sick kid. It's a kid who's in therapies. It's a kid who's, um, getting notes home from school all the time for behavioral issues or their doctors or teachers wanting to take medications but maybe the mom doesn't want to um the kids are stressed out right the kids are living in that gas pedal mode and that's something that we are passionate about providing help for providing answers and providing um, solutions that's what we're going to be talking a lot more about this is about moms this is about taking care of them but i just want to let you know that coming up in the next week and the week after that there's a few different opportunities to learn more about how your kid and the rest of your family can get some help thursday the 24th we're going to be doing a live dinner at Springfield Grill with the ADHD and sensory workshop presentation on why kids are dealing with these challenges, why they're dealing with um, so many struggles. I know Nicole and Heather and a handful of you guys on here, you've been at those and you've seen the impact and that's what's led you to being a part of our Thrive Tribe now. Um, so we, we thank you for trusting us with your family and with your health with that and um, share, you know, share with the, some friends and some other moms that you know that need that help as well. Uh, but anyways, like I was saying, that's an opportunity. We'd be happy to provide dinner for you guys. Come out and join us for there. Um, send us a message or we'll probably post the link in the comments or something here. We'll make sure you get that registration. If for whatever reason, maybe you're not super close here, like Krista, you're still on, we were talking earlier. There's a chance to have that um, similar concept, similar presentation be an online webinar that's going to be broadcast nationally. That's with Dr. Tony Evil. He's our mentor. That's the reason we're in Chicago that Laura was talking about. Uh, he's gonna be sharing that Thursday, the 31st, um, that evening. Uh, so one of those ways, please, if you've got kids that are either dealing with chronic illnesses or sensory challenges or ear infections or ADHD, um, please be there. Because time and time again, I've heard from parents afterwards, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. Why has no one ever told me this before, right? And that's what I hate hearing. And that's what we wanna do whatever we can to um, hear less of. So please be there if that's you because you're not going to regret it. And worst case scenario, you get like a free meal at Springfield Grill, right? That's, 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 pretty, a good that's not too bad. Scenario. I know. 
Sounds bad. And uh, I think we're having like maybe like a two drink limit or something. So maybe if they have some new age wine, you can check that out too. I don't know. We should bring new age wine. Is that a lot? Can yeah. you bring? Okay. Um, so anyways, we, we want to make sure we do that uh, to help your family. Because I know for a lot of you moms, that's your biggest stressor. I know that's something we talk with a lot about. Um, some of you people here on the, the webinar channel, it's your kids' struggles and your kids not being at their best is what really pulls you down. Um, do you want to jump in there or do you want me to share about what we want to do for moms and I want and stuff to, like I that? I want the good stuff. Okay, so you can talk about like gift certificate for them? Oh, you can do that. <laughs> That's not the good stuff, apparently. I think this is a good thing. Apparently, she's got bigger plans. I was missing that part. <laughs> but, um, if this is you, mom, if you're listening, if you're joining in and you're like, oh my gosh, I probably have this hidden stress pulling me down and running me dry. Let's find out. Typically to do that in our office, well, not typically, it is cost $150 to do that initial scan, that analysis, go over the fine, present you with your customized care plan. As a thank you for joining with us, um, we can't send you any wine, but we can give you a $50 gift certificate off of that. Uh, so we'd be more than happy to go through that process with you, see how your body's functioning, see what we can do to help you be at your best and help you help your family be at your best. Um, I think you want to talk about that stuff, right? right? Yes. So I had mentioned that I really enjoy getting my nails done with my mom and our favorite place to go is Elle's Beauty Bar. It's here in Cranberry Township and they're super sweet people. They make me laugh. Nicole knows she's been there. Mm -hmm. A couple of other moms at the office because it's like three doors down. Yeah, which is really convenient for me. <laughs> um, yeah, they're super great. They, you will feel like a person after, after visiting them. Um, but it's really nice inside too. Yeah. I've never like, been there more than 30 there's, seconds it's but so clean it's fancy looking there's no fumes it's awesome um but they want to celebrate moms with us and support you in relaxing and they're going to give anybody who mentions this webinar um 15 off um, their services so um yeah just tell them that you listen to us talk for i don't know how many minutes we've been doing this what time <laughs> and, is it Nine seven. Yeah, you probably earned fifteen percent off if you stuck mm -hmm. around here for you know thirty plus minutes. So yeah, so go treat yourself because you deserve it and you deserve there you go time away. Nicole said Els is great. Yes, um, you deserve it. You're doing a great job, uh, even when you don't, especially when you don't think you are, because that's that means you're great. You're humble and proud all at the same time. All right, I am throwing. I'm going to throw those links up on here uh, on the make sure that anyone has a chance to register for the perfect storm workshop um, live in person, the ADHD and century um, information on how we do the best. So live the 24th at Springfield Grill, online, free webinar, the 31st. Uh, so let me throw this up here. You can keep talking. I don't know what to talk about. I did my part. I said the good stuff that 15% off. That, that is good stuff. Yeah, they were um, Gabby, hence the name Gabrielle Ells. Took Beauty me a long Bar. time to figure that out. Say, um, tell Gabby we said thanks for letting us throw our um, Thrive have some bonuses here. Um, because, yeah, it really is nice. So, we got May 30th, my webinar. Right, is that it then? Are we going to wrap up? I think so. Thank you guys for hanging out. Yeah, this is my first. Facebook Live that I kind of got roped into and was really uncomfortable. Okay. How lame would this have been if it was me talking? No, actually, there's no point in saying this because no one would be on right now if it was just me talking. Um, whereas we still have a whole handful of people listening. Can so, we just admit that I'm the give, funny one? Then? Go ahead. If you're still watching, give Laura a little shout out. Say, Laura, you're so great. Okay. Thanks for hanging out. And Andrew is so lucky. Well, you'd be talking about science this whole time. And that would be great. No, you wouldn't have anybody to talk to. Mm -hmm. Anyway, are you done posting that? Um, sure. I think he needs to post it before we get off here. Hey, Sarah says you did great. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. I think she is great, too. I get I give her a little bit of a hard time sometimes, but look at this, all these loves and flowers and stuff. That are flowers? Up here. I don't know. Who is, can you comment flowers? Or am I just, there's flowers. No. You didn't see it? No. 
I think there's flowers. Will somebody comment any flowers? <laughs> hey, Sarah wants some science though. All right, Sarah, then you should be at the perfect storm. Because yeah, that's gonna that be that's gonna be answers and solutions and science and research and neurology and all of the best things. My yes. bedtime is in five minutes, so we're not doing that tonight. Um Nicole says she loved it too. Thank you guys for listening, appreciate it. And I'm glad that everyone got to hang out for a bit. Cool. Anything else? Should we sign off? Sign off. All right, guys. We should do this again sometime. Let us know if you have any ideas for uh, other ways I can drag Laura into sharing, and I'll try to convince her. Mm -hmm. We might have to move up this start time, though, because it's getting so, tired. pushing the limits. All right. We're going to wrap this up. Have a Bye, great have night, a great guys. Night. Go take care of yourselves.